All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to talk about radical equations. In this section, you're going to learn the definition of a radical equation and how to solve radical equations. Radical equations are those that in, in, involve roots, so square roots, cube roots, anything higher than that, fourth, fifth, sixth roots. Radical equations can be solved by following these steps. The first thing you want to do is isolate the radical on one side of the equation. Get everything else on the other side. Raise both sides to whatever power will get rid of the radical. Solve the resulting equation. And then check your answer to make sure you're not taking the square root of a negative number. So let's try some examples. We have the square root of 3x minus 4 equals 1. Well, here, the radical is already isolated on one side of the equation for us. And so now what we want to do is we just want to square both sides because it's a square root. The square root of x implies x to the 1 half. And so if we want to get rid of that root, we want to square both sides, raise it to the second power. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply 2 times 1 half. It will just give you x to the first. If it were a cube root, we would cube both sides. You should see that in an upcoming example. So what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. And the square root of 3x minus 4 squared is just 3x minus 4. And 1 squared is just 1. And now we can solve this. Add 4 to both sides. Divide by 3. And you get x equals 5 thirds. Now we can go back and check our answer. If we plug in 5 thirds, we get 3 times 5 thirds. We get the square root of 3 times 5 thirds minus 4 is equal to 1. Well, the 3's cancel, and we're left with the square root of 5 minus 4 equals 1, which is the square root of 1, and so this one's okay. And so our answer is just x equals 5 thirds. Let's try another example. Now we have the cube root of 5x minus 2 is equal to negative 3. And so to get rid of the cube root, we have to cube both sides. So the cube root of 5x minus 2 cubed, this side is just going to get rid of the root, and we're left with 5x minus 2. But on the right-hand side, negative 3 cubed, it's negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27. Now we add 2 to both sides. We get 5x is equal to negative 25. Divide by 5 and you get x equals negative 5. Okay, so let's try another example. Here we have the square root of y minus 1. Plus 4 is equal to 0. The first thing we want to do is isolate the root. And so let's subtract 4 from both sides. We get the square root of y minus 1 is equal to negative 4. Now to get rid of the root, we need to square both sides. And when we do that, we get the square root of y minus 1 squared, which is just y minus 1. And negative 4 squared, which is 16. We can then add 1 to both sides, and we get y equals 17. Now let's check our answer. The square root of y minus 1 plus 4 is equal to 0. So what we have is 17 minus 1 plus 4 equals 0. So that's the square root of 16 plus 4 equals 0. So 4 plus 4 
Well, eight's not equal to zero. And because eight's not equal to zero, we can't keep 17 as a solution. This final example is a little bit more complex. But the ideas are still the same. We want to isolate the root by itself, which we have. We have the square root of 6x plus 7 is equal to x plus 2. Now to solve this, we solve it the same way. We want to square both sides. And when we square both sides, the square root of 6x plus 7 squared is just 6x plus 7. x plus 2 squared, well, that's x plus 2 times x plus 2. We have to FOIL this. x times x is x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. And so that gives us 6x plus 7 x squared plus 4x plus 4. And now to solve this problem, this is a quadratic function. To solve it, we want to move everything to one side of the equation. We want something equal 0. So subtract 6x from both sides. Subtract 7 from both sides. And what we get just rearranging the equation is x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And so now we want to solve this function. We can factor this quadratic equation. It's going to give us x minus 3 and x plus 1. We can then take each piece and set it equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides. We get x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. So now we just want to check both of our answers. We had the square root of 6x plus 7 is equal to x plus 2. And so if x is 3, we get the square root of 18 plus 7, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And 3 plus 2 is 5. And so x equals 3 works. And if x is negative 1, we get negative 1 times 6, which is negative 6, plus 7. which is negative 6 plus 7, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. And on the other side, negative 1 plus 2 still gives you 1. So negative 1 works as well. So both of these numbers are solutions to that equation. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve radical equations.